sands. Win. Caesars. MGM. March 16th, 2020 was an unprecedented day. The day Vegas went dark. The slots were quiet. The halls were abandoned. And after the order by Governor Steve Sisolak, all tourists abandoned the strip March 18th of 2020. Okay. Uh, this is new. Right. Okay. The floor is now closed. Oh. The floor is. We gotta go see this. And for 78 days, Vegas stayed stagnant. No cards were dealt. No parties were had. No steaks to be grilled. Sin City was sterile. It's been a full month since reopening weekend, but is a Vegas trip worth it? That's something only Ace of Vegas, master of all casino apps, can answer. Or really anyone that's been there in the last month, but thanks for tuning in. It's the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Hello there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. The Dark Knight of Domino City has returned to paradise, and here is what it's like. Welcome back to Vegas and our special July 4th Las Vegas trip report. The flight was a little different. Even arriving at the airport, things seemed a little separate. There were close quarters lines for the flight, though security was surprisingly easy to get through. Honestly, I've never gotten through airport security so quickly in the last 20 years. Okay, this is... Post security, and it's a little quiet. Sorry, not post security. This is post check-in. So huge check-in line over there, and uh, yeah, pretty empty here. The flight was fine once we got into the air. The airplane shut down in the middle of takeoff, not on the taxiway, but on an active runway. We blew a circuit board on the emergency exit door, and those wouldn't latch. So we had to delay the flight for an entire hour, as that was repaired. Once we were safe and took it to the skies, the flight was a little spartan. The good news was, the plane only had every other seat filled in, so we got to use both armrests. The bad news was, there was no beer or tea on this flight, just water and trail mix. But for $120 round trip, including checked bags, I suppose I shouldn't complain. One quick $12 lift ride later, and we arrived at MGM Grand. Sadly, the $20 technique didn't really come into play. I asked about an upgraded room at check-in. I was booked in the West Wing rooms. After that, I was upgraded to a Grand Tower Queen room with a 28th floor placement. My clerk took care of the shift, and it looked like she was planning to do it before I even asked, so I tipped her $20 anyway. Okay, Spinners and Sharks, so what I've been told is I'm supposed to be going into the Grand Tower now and not the West Wing, so we've officially weaseled our way out of the West Wing. That's going to be floors 21 through 29 here. So let's go ahead and see how that goes. Put the old card. Let's go. <laughs> Let's move. All right. Let's have a look inside. For some reason, it would have been $40 a night more to be on the Grand Tower instead of the West Wing, so I'll still call it $100 saved. In addition to that, my M-Life and my Vegas comps got me a total of three free nights between the two of them, plus resort fees, meaning I spent $119 on resort fees, but saved $242 more considering the base room rate that I could be getting. The room itself was a regular Grand Queen room, but it sure beats the West Wing King they tried to stick me in. Nothing to write home about, but again, it's a decent upgrade. We've got... Oh, it's a clean kit! MGM Grand actually pro provides her with a clean kit here. Let's check this out. I kind of want to empty this out. Let's see what's in here. Okay, so the clean kit that you get from MGM Grand. You get a consumer mask over here. We're gonna have to try that on a little later. Oh, a lot of hand sanitizer. 
and then you also get a door opener as well as a screen toucher here. So check that out, it's got a rubber tip for capacitive uh, touch screens, which is basically everything now. And then you also get this neat little carrying case to carry it all in. The beds were comfortable enough, and the Grand Tower is quiet, so I got lots of sleep. But you're not here to hear about my 40 winks at night. No, let's talk Vegas. The first night was a fun one. I spent most of the time kind of lounging around the hotel in the room and decided to wander downtown for a bit. But before that happened, I had to do some quality, casual Vegas dining. So I decided to save a little cash by going with a special and a beer at MGM Grand's Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill. Dinner and a drink ended up being about $50 without a My Vegas reward. If I was in a group, I probably would have saved upwards of $45. But I went solo, so that means no additional savings. Velasquez didn't last long as we hopped downtown and hit up El Cortez. There we discovered that if you bring your airline boarding pass, you get free play, a free drink, and $25 in match play at the tables. A paper boarding pass is nice, but online boarding pass is also acceptable. And we got a nice little voucher for it. And the $20 we won on the slots with another blackjack win of $40 saved us a total of $105. So if you factor in my winnings of $60 and the savings of $45, we've only spent $341 so far, and we've saved $387. That makes for a pretty darn good return. Not done yet though. It was time to catch the Hot Mess Express. Cinnamon Girl had already started doing a live stream of her group pull, and luckily apparently a crash live stream brought good luck, as I was just in time to witness her very first hand pay on YouTube. Link to Cinnamon Girl's channel is in the description box below. On the way to cause more chaos, we also met up with the Sin City Nerds. They were there at Plaza for the weekend too, so we met up with them and continued to G-Gen a little bit more. This set of stairs and this escalator over here. That is going to lead us to the beautiful MGM Grand pool area, which is a pretty sizable pool actually. Very popular, well done pool complex, and it's got a lazy river to die for. The next day we decided to hang back and enjoy the pools. I spent most of the morning at the MGM Grand in its humongous pool area. Normally, the entire pool complex encompasses the same area as five football fields, but this time it felt a bit smaller. There were a few bars and restaurants that were closed down, specifically around the Lazy River, as it was also closed down for social distancing protocols, leaving largely the Cabana Grill and a couple daiquiri bars around the pool open. The MGM Grand itself wasn't too terribly crowded. The front of the facility definitely had a lot of in and out traffic, including our friend Tim from the Vegas Paradise, but most of the casino was pretty quiet. More on that later. Back to the pools. I got a fun look at the Plaza Hotel and Casino pool with Sin City Nerds right before our group pull. Keep an eye out for their review on YouTube. Then it was finally time to do the first ever Ace of Vegas group pull. Oh, we are live! <laughs> Who the F is the mystery guest? Best, of, yeah, okay. I guess we are live now. What's up, Finnish and Sharks? Ace of Vegas here. I hope you're doing well. And I'm out here with all of our dear friends. We got Sin City Nick from Sin Hello. City Nerds, Sin City K from Sin City Nerds, and I have no idea who this guy is over here. Richard Welk in the house. Hey. What's up? Welcome to the D. Welcome to the D, guys. All right, so we've got a cash together. Um, we have a list. I'm gonna have to check it twice. As I think everybody's in here. I think we're just waiting on Vegas best ideas, but we can probably get warmed up over here and uh, yeah, let's have some fun. Special thanks to our friend Richard Wilk at the D for letting us film and hosting us at the D Hotel and Casino downtown in Las Vegas. We fought the machines valiantly, but didn't get too far. Ultimately, we lost about $50 on every entry, but a good time was had by all and we were met with another fun surprise. Oh, we got VBI, Tamara and Gord in the house. Good to see you guys, just in time for the stream. Our Canadian friends made it over the border successfully. These are our special guest stars for tonight. Vegas Best Ideas managed to catch us in between spins and joined us upstairs at Bar Canada. We drank a couple of celebratory Caesars upstairs and got lots of tasty snacks from TNG. I am, as a result, now addicted to ketchup chips. Between that and the blackjack free play, the Ace of Vegas bankroll was up another $50 by the end of the night. The next day was a pretty solid gambling day. I hunted through Excalibur, New York, New York, and Luxor for some good games to play. I discovered the hotels were the cleanest I'd ever seen them, but sadly there weren't a lot of quality machines to play on. 
we still managed to come out ahead on our My Vegas free play by using the Quick Hits game, and also by hitting Luxor for a couple clean hands of $10 blackjack, thanks to the Luxor match play credit reward, bringing us up to a clear $150 profit. Without any shows, buffets, or lounges, there weren't many more My Vegas rewards to use, so we busted out the Tom Zerbin 2 for 1 Tom sized beer credit. It's in effect drinking a six pack by yourself, but for $20 off, it's not too bad. And a prime rib sandwich is a good way to get ready for some more slot play. With that, it was time for a couple more final group pulls. Off to Cosmo. Cinnamon Girl had the gang all together for a group pull, so I thought I'd drop by with a little bit of backup too. Luckily, Jacob Orth from Jacob's Life in Vegas has a good sense of humor, and he thought it'd be kind of fun to go crash a friend's live stream as well. Took her just a second with the mask, right? Oh my god. You are a drunk crazy person. That's why we love you, Ma. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I do that every once in a yeah. while. Okay. The group poll wasn't super successful, but we ended up making a little money with Vegas Best Ideas shortly after, so we'll call the spend an even $200 up to this point, factoring in the Uber and Lyft rides. Thank God for the Canadians. Vegas Best Ideas coming through with that big pay over here. I love it. This might be the uh, last documented footage of Nick surviving. I'm dead. Right. So here's the funny thing. We're pretty much in the same position we were when we ended the tour last time when we were at Aria. So things are kind of popping and everybody, everybody's here. It's just that there's, once again, not much else to do but eat and gamble right now. So that's been interesting. The night ended at Aria, ironically where the March trip ended in our last trip report. Definitely quite the juxtaposition, less transportation and us hanging around looking for a decent machine to play. A good time was had by all, and it was worth the flight. So the best parts of the trip, aside from meeting up with friends, were definitely the pools. If you get in early, they're well worth it. Lots of food and drink, and it's open air, so they're less restrictive on what you can do there. The machines are about the same as usual, but I found it was really easy to get in on table games and make up what you lose on the slots. And the deals are very easy to come by, flights are decent, and there are a couple of pretty good offers coming from the casinos to get folks into the door. Now for the bad news. There's lots of micromanagement of the mask wearing. I don't mind wearing a mask, of course, I just don't need security breathing down my neck if I have my mask down for three seconds in between sips of my beer. And while the casinos are very clean, really impressed by that by the way, there's still a bit stripped down. Fancy dining is a yes, but shows are a no-go. So if you're into clubbing, shows, or other attractions like exhibits and roller coasters, Vegas probably isn't for you right now. Wait until next year and keep saving your My Vegas loyalty points. And despite the cleaning, some hotels haven't taken a lot of time to do some much needed updates. The best and the worst of it was the lines. Properties are doing a really good job of reducing occupancies and I'm glad to see that. But if you're not already opted into something, expect to wait a lot, or ultimately, just not get anywhere. So you may end up drinking in the room by yourself or with your friends if you're done gambling. Overall, I think my MGM Grand Trip was a solid one. It wasn't my favorite trip thus far, mainly because lounges and other attractions aren't available. And I feel like you have to plan pretty heavily on busier weekends, otherwise you'll end up getting bored and hungry. I'm certainly happy to have gotten out of the house, and hopefully the trip will be a good one in the fall. Compared to our spring trip during the shutdown, things weren't that different. Everything had kind of a reduced capacity, non-gambling options are at a minimum, and the most fun you'll have is by being social, spinning slots, or by sharking cards. I was expecting a stark contrast, but I suppose the more things change, the more things stay the same. And that just about does it for today's video, Spinners and Sharks. If you enjoyed today's trip report and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you all for checking out the report and big shout outs to all my friends that joined me on the trip. I had a tremendous time despite the lack of full on pool parties, karaoke bars, and Vegas shows. Don't forget to open up the description box below and check out all these great folks and vloggers we hung out with. And while you're down there, be sure to let me know if you're planning a visit to Vegas anytime soon or if you're going to wait for things to calm down a little bit more. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Okay, y'all, until next time, though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, wishing you all strong hands, happy spinning, and most importantly, good health.
Viva Las Vegas 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 Viva Las Vegas